battery. There it's going. It's like really, really. Okay, check it out. Um, we are now moving from electrostatics to circuitry. Okay, this is where electricity gets pretty interesting. Okay, so everything that you plug in, everything that you own that takes a battery, a car, is this stuff. Okay, now these three words right here. You need to know the definitions, you need to know how to measure them, you need to know the units they're measured in, you need to understand what exactly they are, you need to know how they're related, how they're similar, how they're different, okay, all of those things. So, front words and back, you have to know these words, okay? How many of you have heard one or two of these? Okay, all right, this, is, this stuff's a huge deal. Okay, and it's really cool stuff too. So we'll go through it, we'll take some notes, and I, all this massive disorganization up here, okay, we'll play with all of this stuff. Okay, I'll kind of show you this stuff today, but you'll get to play with it too. Okay, so, yeah, let's talk about rafting for a minute. Mm -hmm. This is Westwater, okay? Is that you? No, this is not me. Um, but I have been here, and a few times, and it's crazy, okay, the river is going like this, and then it takes a hard left-hand turn, okay, and the geology of it over the, you know, millions of years, whatever, okay, has formed this room back here, it's called the Room of Doom, okay, and the Room of Doom was cut away by the river, and what happens is, if you get too far on the right side here, you will go in the room of doom. Doom. And you can't get out. Right. That's why it's called the room of doom. <laughs> All right, Melanie, like, you ever been in the room of doom? What do you mean you can't no, get out? No, but we got pretty close to hitting the shock rock. Okay. And one time my dad got washed up on the wall on the right, and both his oars snapped, and they just sat there for like 20 minutes. So he got pinned up on this one. Or on the wall on the right of the hole. Oh, okay. Like oh yeah, right there. Well, okay. It's not really in the picture, like, oh, down further. Yeah. That. Okay. So it's it's bad stuff happens in here, Cameron. We flipped on skull and ended up in the river doom. You did. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now at certain levels you can get back out, but at certain levels you are stuck in there. That's why it's called the room of doom. So what happens is it's a back eddy. So the water here is going downstream, obviously, but the water right here is actually going upstream. So the upstream and downstream creates this rip of current, and it creates actually kind of a plume, and you cannot row across it. Or if you're in a kayak, you can't paddle across it. It'll, you can try, but it'll just shoot you right back in here, and you'll swirl around. You have to hike out. And you have to leave your raft. So rafts are hundreds of pounds when they're loaded up. Your raft is going to swirl around in there until the water level goes down to a safe level and then you can actually go in there. So yeah, right. when we go down there at like, I don't know, 4,000 CFS or something like that, then we go in there for fun. We'll go through this rapid, we'll go in there and just kind of like eat lunch in there while we swirl around. <laughs> but at high level, it's you don't you don't go in there. Okay? So you'd actually you'd be going up a hill of water. Yeah, you're kind of trying to go up a hill of water. It's, a, oh it's called an eddy fence, okay, it's an eddy and there's an eddy line that you can't cross because it's too strong. Okay, now why the heck am I talking about rafting just to waste time and yeah. <laughs> talk about stuff that I like to talk about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I could talk yeah. about rafting for hours and throw fishing in there days, months, okay, endless stuff. All right, but that's not why we're talking about it. It's on. Okay, question? Um, so, if you get stuck in there, you have to leave your raft, but how do you, like, swim out without getting stuck? Right, you don't swim out. You have to hike up, you have to scale this canyon wall and hike out the top. Oh, so your raft is close enough to the wall for you to scale. Yeah, you just, I don't really know how people get out of it. It's it's not good. If you go in there, it's it's really bad. We've seen... I, one time at like a level similar to this, we rafted by the Room of Doom, and there was a cow legs, four cow legs. <laughs> no, the dead my cow God. was going around Seriously? in there. No way. Yeah, debris, logs, all kinds of nasty Ooh. stuff. 
all kinds of dead stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's an ugly place. <laughs> so like, how how often does That's the so level of the river drop? Okay, out? now check this out, guys. Yes, I'm curious. You, how many of you have rafted or floated through town before? Okay. Now, if you float through town, it's basically flat water, but it does go down a little bit. Okay. Then you get to the 29 road wave. Okay. And at 29 road, there is a little drop in elevation, thus creating a small rapid. Okay. Then it gets flat until you get to the Fifth Street wave. Tiny little drop in elevation, which produces a fun little family friendly rapid. Okay. I take my three year old over that rapid and it's Sorry. sick. Okay? Then it's flat for a long time, and then you have west water. Okay? What creates the big rapids? Rocks. Elevation. Big elevation drops. Okay? This is gravitational potential energy up here. Okay? Big drops in elevation equal big rapids. Okay? Now, circuits are similar. Okay? Big drops in elevation in circuits correspond to big voltages. All right, so just like elevation, potential energy pushes water along, voltage sources, batteries, okay, your wall sockets, they don't push water, they push what? Electrons. Electrons. They push Q, they push charge along. Okay. Now, more voltage, it's like more pressure behind the charge. Okay, it's just like a river, but with electrons. Okay, so instead of water, what do we got? Electrons. We got electrons in the wires, we got charge. Okay, so that's current. Water current is like electrical current. All right, now, there's something that slows electricity down. What word is that? Resistance. Okay. Resistors, resistance. In a river, what slows the water down? Rocks. Rocks, the river bottom, branches hanging in. We call those strainers in the in rafting lingo. Okay. Um, in a circuit, it's a resistor. Okay. Now everything that you plug in is a resistor. We're gonna do a bunch of labs with light bulbs. Light bulbs are resistors. They resist flow. Some things are designed to have high resistance. Some things are designed to have low resistance. Do we, do we want high resistance in wires? No. No. Okay? We want these to be as low resistance as possible. All right? That's what we're studying. Okay? And it's all kind of, it all kind of parallels with, with river stuff. Okay. I had some juniors make this work. Not, this isn't their actual project. This is just off the internet. But... <laughs> This can make a voltage. This can push charge. How? Okay. This is a little mini generator. How? Today we're just going to talk about voltage. So did they bring a hamster to school? They did bring a hamster to school. Oh, yeah, it was a cool junior project. So, if like, so I'm a little bit confused. Does height actually affect voltage? Okay. No. The height is the voltage of the river. It pushes the water along. Oh. Okay? So In it's circuits, a metaphor. it's not a, yeah, it's a parallel. It's okay. a metaphor. That's exactly right. Okay? All right, now check this out. Gravity. Melaine, you with me here? Okay, gravity. Don't we separate things that like each other? Okay? <laughs> if we pull this up here, this now has what? Potential energy. Potential energy. Okay, it's got joules of potential. All right, it's like s stretching a spring. Okay, that's got potential energy. Now over here, in a battery, what we are doing is we are bringing together charge that doesn't like to hang out together. Okay, this is a little bit of an oversimplification. It's actually a bunch of different chemicals and acid. And, okay, but basically we're bringing together a lot of stuff that doesn't want to hang out. Okay, that is like compressing a spring. It's also joules, it's energy. Okay, so electric potential energy is the total amount of energy that is stored in something. So we could talk about the electric potential energy stored in this battery. All right, and it's measured in joules. 
Electric potential is the total amount of energy for each coulomb of charge. Okay, energy per unit charge. So we call this joules per coulomb. All right. We actually call that volts. So in your notes, the first column right there that says volts. Okay. Volts and joules per coulomb are the same thing. So where it says variable, you're going to put volts. We abbreviate it capital V. So the unit of measure is volts and coulombs. Yeah, volts, capital V. Okay, now the unit. So does it say variable first in your notes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so it says variable there. Now, units are also the volt. So it's kind of weird because the variable and the unit have the same name and symbol. And the symbol is capital V. But we need to remember that volts are also joules per coulomb. This will make a little bit more sense in the next couple slides. Energy per unit charge. Okay, so let's talk about a 9 volt battery. All right, what does that mean, 9 volts? Okay, it means that it takes 9 joules of energy for every coulomb of charge that is brought together. Okay, now in a battery, there can be like 5,000 coulombs. Okay, so in this battery right here, there's about 5,000 coulombs of charge. Okay, this one. Maybe a little less because it's a little smaller, okay? But in the thousands of coulombs somewhere, okay? Now to get that charge to hang out in the same place, it takes nine joules of energy. It's like compressing all this in the same place. But now does, can't this put out that nine joules of energy? Light a light bulb, yeah. or something like that, okay? That's what's going on here. Nine joules of energy can be released, okay? from that flow of charge. Okay, low voltage versus high voltage. This is a nine volt, okay? This right here, what do you, how do you suppose this compares to this? Higher or lower voltage? Higher. Lower. It's bigger, right? Lower. Does anybody know the voltage of this? Like, I know. Is it like seven? Five. These are common, you have these at your house. Seven. Like five or seven. Okay, we know this is nine. This is actually 1.5. Oh, yeah. hmm. Okay, now here, here's what's going on. Inside of this battery, there's more potential. The charge is compacted more, okay? Inside this battery, all right, a low voltage would be like a, more of a spread out charge, okay? It's kind of about the charge density here. So it's almost like a car battery. 12. Car batteries are 12, okay. So it'd be like a, a tighter, compressed spring in the 9 volt battery. Okay, now somebody pull a battery out of their calculator. What are those called? AAA. AAA. The naming of batteries makes absolutely no sense. Okay. This is a AAA. Then it goes to AA. And then it goes to C. Okay. And then it goes to D. Too. So that's weird. All right, now what's the voltage of this? Did you guys look? Mm. Can I eat it? Not a good idea. It's 1.5. Oh, 1.5. Okay, so these are the same. That means that you could run your calculator on four of these because there's the same charge pressure, if you will. There's the same amount of pressure behind the flow for this battery as this battery. Okay? So, if these are basically the same, meaning same voltage, what is different about them? This. How, how much charge I have in there. Hates. Okay? So, this, this is like this battery over here. Okay? I've got the same amount of voltage, but I've got a lot more energy because I've got a lot more charge present. Okay? But it means this. You could take your calculator and without, by the end of this unit, everybody in this class will be able to do what I'm about to tell you. 
I could give you four of these, not this black plate. You could take these and you could take a couple of wires and you could make a really sweet battery pack for your graphing calculator. <laughs> and you could walk around with your graphing calculator hooked up to these rather than these wimpy little things. That's an and your calculator would not perform any better, it would simply last longer. It would last longer. That's no, it's cool. That's Think all. about you walking into the ACT <laughs> with that Getting strapped to your calculator. Yeah, you can yell that oh wait, can you have a calculator on the ACT? Yeah, yeah. yeah but it has, it has to be, to be like, like a certain regulation. Yeah, but calculator. you're not breaking any rules. You just, you know, yeah. look, that's you're looking like it's like chumps. You like hit notes <laughs> in your battery. Yeah. <laughs> you like pop them open and there's a paper in there. All right, yeah. a couple more slides here. Okay, so the bigger battery is simply, it's going to be the same pressure behind the charge again. There's just going to be more of it, more charge to spend. So we put these in flashlights, because flashlights use a lot of charge. Your calculator, it doesn't need that. How, those batteries last like a whole year. Yeah. Okay, so it simply doesn't, we don't need to carry around these big D cells for our batteries. Okay, you guys seen these? Oh, yeah. Six volts. Oh, yeah. These are lantern <laughs> batteries. They have a lower voltage than the nine volt, but they simply have a lot of storage, okay, to make them last longer. So we could say this one's more volts, more pressure behind the charge. This one is more coulombs, okay, but a little less joules per coulomb. All right, questions? Okay, Connor? So if one of those heavy duty ones are 6 volts and your car runs on 12 volts, could you combine those two batteries together and make your car go? Um, could you take two of these, wire them together and make your car go? Yeah. Batteries have what's called internal resistance too, oh. and your car battery is made to deliver charge very quickly because it needs to have a lot of what we call current amps. Mm -hmm. These are not designed to deliver current quick enough to start your car. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are these are meant to trickle out charge mm. slower at a slow rate. Your car battery is made to send a ton of current through those wires. So yeah, it probably I don't think you could start a car on this. Oh. It'd be a good experiment, but I don't think you could. Okay, is Mitchell. It, um, so like this, those types of batteries that like you crack them open and they just have a bunch of double A's in them. But wouldn't that mean that that battery would then have like 1.5 volts or how many of or however much that double A has? I don't know. Never taken one apart. What? Oh. You've never taken a battery? I've never taken one of these batteries uh, apart. Yeah. <laughs> what is it, Sawyer? Uh, I forgot. <laughs> okay. Now I want to show you guys meters, okay? And let's see. Is that focused on the screen? Can I see that there? Yeah. Okay, let's look at this. Sure. So this is called the multimeter. All right, some of you who have fixed Move trailer down, lights or right down. stuff like that have okay. worked with these before. They measure all kinds of things. We'll check out volts today. So if I hook up this 1.5 volt battery like this, oh, look at that, 1.4 volts. What a rip off. Okay, now, what if I take two batteries and I connect them like this? What do you guys think? Eight. No. Is it going to double the voltage or is it going to be the same? Same. Same. Because it's the same amount of like. Okay. Mm. Let's check it out. Ah. Oh. Oh, I was right. It doubled the voltage. Okay. That's kind of cool. All right. So what if I took four of them and stuck them together? And it would be four times. Okay. Like that. That's good. I can't hold that. Why don't you use your contraption over there? The black okay, so we can go like that. Oh, I can't get a good connection there. Okay, but you guys get the point, <laughs> right? Okay, 1.5 each time. So this is how many volts right here? Is that four batteries? Four times 1.5. Six. Six volts. Okay, Melanie. Um. So when you plug that thing into the battery, like on the other side, are you are you losing charge from the battery? Um, is this like a teeny bit? No. No? No, it's not, it's not taking any charge to measure it. Oh. Okay, now when I start doing this, 
Okay, you guys are going to play with, with these. These simply make it easier to do what I just did. So we plug these in. And we got all kinds of meters and ways to measure voltage. So I'll show you this one too. This is just simply an analog meter. Alright, so Whoa. you guys see that alright? Barely. Hurts my head. Let me zoom out here, you'll be able to see it better. Okay, so what you do here is you connect this. Alright, this right here is engaging one battery, except that. I can't see that. Flipped. Okay, you guys see how that went up to about 1.5? Sure. Alright, I connected it right there. Okay, I don't think I can zoom out any more than that, but I guess I can go like this. Whoa. Oh, wait, yeah. Okay. Alright, now if I take this and move it over here, pretty much max out the scale at 3 volts. Check out this cool feature. If I go like that, that'll go up to 15 volts. So it's reading the this set of numbers right here. So I can put this over here, and now don't I have 6 volts right there? Yeah. Okay, so different meters. You guys are going to be playing with all of this stuff. All right, another one we have is the Lab Quest. So these right here, these are pretty cool because these have a voltage probe as well. And we can take maybe one of the lantern batteries or something. We can hook it up here. And what should it read? Six. Should read six, right? Weak. Okay, what's this tell me? It's dead. Dead battery. All right. I don't know why do batteries have to die. Why is it so dramatic? <laughs> All right. When something else breaks, it's just like broken. But when the battery is out of juice, it dies. <laughs> so why do you say it so <laughs> solemnly? Okay. This is sad. Now thing. forget batteries for a second. What if we start hooking things up to the wall? The All right. Wall. Should we start plugging things into the electrical outlets? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna do it, but you guys are never allowed to do this ever, ever. Okay. Does it look like a good idea to stick no. these into the wall socket? Absolutely. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now that meter over there is an analog <coughs> meter that is made to measure AC voltage, alternating current. Okay? You can't just stick any meter in the wall sockets that you want. Okay? That's why I'm doing this. Okay? And what do you do in the case of someone that someone electrocutes himself? <laughs> yeah, what would happen if you did? Okay, what's it reading? 120. 120. Okay, so see the red wire? The red wire means that since I'm all the way over on the right, I'm reading the top scale, okay? And that's really all we do is read the top scale because in the United States, all of our outlets are 120, okay? Except what? Our 220s or our 240s. So our dryers, our um, hot tubs, probably not the dishwasher, those are usually 110. Um, things that require a lot of power, so air conditioning units, those are all plugged into 120. Aren't they higher in like Europe? 220, sorry, thank you. Yeah, now in, in Europe they operate at higher voltage, lower current. Here we operate at lower current, higher voltage. It's a trade off, but we're not getting into that. You just said the same thing twice. Did I? Yeah. Let me repeat myself correctly. Here we operate at lower voltage, higher current. There you go. Is that? Yes. Okay. You were just trying to. Okay, now let's check this out. Guys, we're not getting into that today. We will, though. I have a question. Okay, you guys will experiment with these as well. Okay, this is another voltage source. So what we can do, this is just like a battery, but it plugs in, and it takes the wall voltage of 120. It's 
it's between 110 and 120 at all times, and it steps it down to these voltages right here. Okay, can you guys read those? No. Nope. Yeah. So 3.3 all the way up to 12 volts. What we can do is turn this on in the back here. And we've got six volts running, but I don't get any anything lighting up. Okay, now I'm on 12 volts. I still have nothing lighting up. So what must be true? I don't know. Oh, look at that. Did you see that? You just blew it up. I just burned up a light bulb. Okay, so that tells us that these Christmas lights, can they handle 12 volts? No. Not a no, single not, one. Not, not a single one. We have them connected in a big string. Yeah, so let's turn this down to... Cut the voltage in half. We like we like blowing up Christmas lights in physics. Okay, look at that. That's bright. Okay, isn't that fun? That's you guys really are gonna cool. get to do this too. Why now check this out. Up? Let's see if this one because you he's going to electrocute you. Yeah, no. Okay, that's a great question. Why am I not getting electrocuted? Because it's like DC it's an insulator. It's DC, okay. not AC, right? This stuff is this is way more conductive than I am. Okay, so the electrons don't care. Even if I grab right there, all right, not a good idea if we're messing around, not messing around, but if we're doing something with house wire, okay, you don't want to grab anything. In fact, I've been shut off. Oh, no, but these not. small DC voltages are very safe for us to, to explore this stuff. Okay, now let's check this out. Let's turn this down to three. Okay? Oh, that's cool. Let's turn the light off too. Okay. What do you notice about the brightness as we go up? Change. Oh, you burned out another bulb. You killed it. <laughs> He's like, oh darn. Okay. So some different voltage sources. Is that what happens when your lights go out, or do they run out of? Like, do they just? Well, it depends on the light bulb, you know. If you're talking about a flashlight, it might burn out because the batteries are out. Like a household light. A household light? Yeah, just like screw into a, your fan or something. Yeah, what happens is the filament gets old. That's why and it just the little wire that the electricity runs through. Uh, okay. And once it gets old from heating up and cooling down, heating, it just simply breaks. Because it just uh, so that happen. Yeah, it doesn't. But if you did so if throw you a bunch of bolts out of it, would. Sure enough. Yeah. Sure. But your house voltage is constant, so you're not changing everything all the time. Okay, now you guys want to see the thing up here that has the most voltage of anything? Yes. You're sure. Are you guys I? ready? <laughs> Hang on, this is going to be cool. <laughs> what I ever. Okay. That has the most voltage. What happened to Edgar? <laughs> oh my god. Guess how many volts that is? Eight billion. Five thousand volts, what I just did. <laughs> I just lost all interest in voltage. <laughs> yeah, that's so boring. So Five, doesn't that sound dangerous? 5,000 <coughs> volts? No. This wall socket is way more dangerous, and it's only between 110 and 120. This is 5,000. Why isn't it dangerous then? Okay. All right. So what's that, what's that tell you about voltage? There's different types. Okay. Here's, here's the same. Current kills. AC. Okay, current is what can electrocute you. Now, voltage and increased voltage will increase the current, which can kill you. But you can also have really high voltage, but simply not a lot of charge. So on that balloon, there's not enough electrons. There's not a, enough actual coulombs to electrocute a person or really anything. Now, could it produce maybe a little spark or a zap or a jump or make someone's hair stand up? Sure. Okay. But not a, not a lot more than that. Um, let's see. Do I have anything else to show you guys? I what don't think so, but let's make sure our notes are filled in completely for this first part. What is that device up there next to the fishing line? Okay, this device right here. This, this is just another voltage source. Okay, like this one over here. But this one's only got certain increments. This one's cool because it's got a dial. So I can go anywhere from, this one goes up to 15 volts. All right? So it's just a way to change the voltage. We could attach a Christmas light just to this, turn it up and see where it burned out. That'd be kind of cool.
Okay, so let's let's summarize here. Okay, variable volts. Unit of measure also volts. Joules per coulomb. Okay, now we're going to be drawing these in circuits. We're going to be doing circuit diagrams. We don't like to draw a battery. Okay, so what we do is this. That is the battery symbol. What is that, a negative one? No, it's simply <laughs> oh, two that's just perpendicular lines to these, one smaller than the other. Okay, now this indicates the positive side of the battery. You're positive. This indicates the negative. I know, I am pretty positive. But thank you for that. <laughs> Okay. All right, I think that's it. Do you guys have any